Hey guys, this is Amira Banks. We just wrapped red carpet premiere for Zero Dark Thirty, which is getting a lot of Oscar buzz. We talked to a lot of the cast members, including Jessica Chastain, about her strong portrayal of a female lead actor. And we also talked about how Catherine Bigelow played a part in that. <laughs> yes. Love. We love the whole outfit. You look beautiful. Thank you so much. Now I see a reoccurring theme. Everyone, it seems like, is wearing blue. Were you guys chose to wear blue? Or? No, we did not even plan that, but it's a lot You're of just all on one accord, huh? After yeah. filming for so long. I know. Maybe maybe Catherine's gonna show up in a red dress. It'd be like red, white, and blue. Well, I love it. So I wanted to say, you know, last year you were nominated for the help and now we have this Oscar buzz going on. Are you is there pressure about it or how do you feel right now? Well, I've had to keep this movie a secret for a year. I'm horrible at keeping secrets. I absolutely hate them. Like even Christmas presents. I just want to like give you the present. I don't want to keep it a secret for a few weeks. Um, so to have to keep this character a secret when she's so incredible. Um, when people Also there's speculation that I was playing a Navy SEAL wife which just drove me nuts. I just wanted to shout from the rooftop, no, I'm playing a woman at the center of the greatest manhunt in history. That was a tough thing. But the past two weeks now that the movie's being shown, and people can't just, you know, make it a scandalous. They, they, they can watch it and um, see what how it is on its own. It's a it's like a huge weight's been lifted off my shoulders. Now you hit on two things that I wanted to ask you about any before you even mentioned that, and that was one, playing such a strong female character in this and a character that was central to the capturing of Osama bin Laden. Now, do you feel that Catherine was able to really hone in on that character without downplaying her feminism? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let's be honest. When we Historically, in movies, lead female characters are defined by men. Love interests, or they're the victim of the villain of the piece. Maya, this character I play, is not that. She's intelligent, she's capable, she's strong, she stands on her own. In my opinion, she is the perfect representation of this generation of women. And to be in this movie with Catherine Bigelow, who I think is the only filmmaker who could tell that story, is a great honor that I will have forever. Thank you. We are here with the beautiful Jennifer Ill. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. I love your blue lace. I was just saying it seems like all the cast members are wearing blue tonight. It's funny because I saw that Catherine's got blue lace. We've got blue. We've all got blue lace. Well, now tell us a little bit about your character in the movie. I play a character named Jessica, confusingly enough, and um, I am a, an agent, an analyst in the Middle East, a CIA analyst, and I'm um, sort of more of an old school analyst than Jessica Chastain's character, Maya. And so at the beginning you sort of think we're going to kind of be nemesis kind of material, but uh, it it, it, it is all less cliched than that, and our, our relationship becomes much more interesting and complicated than it seems. And I was just talking to Jessica about having such strong female representation in the movie. Tell us a little bit more about what you feel. Do you feel Catherine was able to really bring that out in this script? Absolutely. I mean, I think Mark wrote um, a script with two really strong female characters in it who are not defined by their relationship with a man. They're defined by their relationship with their work. And um, their friendship grows um, by, you know, through their work, by working together, by side by side. And yes, and absolutely. I mean, having Cath Catherine understand, understood the relationship really well, we did too. I mean, I think women would love to play women like this more often. We just don't get the opportunity usually. Well, I want them to be moved, and I want them to know that this is, you know, this is the story kind of behind, you know, the, intelli the story of the intelligence community finding this man. And these are like, these are incredibly brave individuals, dedicated individuals, who sacrificed a lot in order to accomplish this mission. You follow the people that did it, you know, you don't go with the headlines and the, and the, and the politicians and the journalists, you go with the men and women. Which Catherine, you know, watching The Hurt Locker has an amazing ability to put you you know, with these people and, and turn the story back from headlines into something very human. Huge Catherine Bigelow fan. I'm excited to see what her next 
epic war picture is going to be like. And there aren't many female directors doing things like this, so definitely want to come out and show support. I'm a huge fan, yes. I just think women filmmakers they are rare and one of this caliber, you know, really should be held up to really high esteem. And so I'm so happy to be able to be here and, and support. You know, it's, um, I, th I think she's made interesting film, and I think I've always been a fan of films that make us think. And I tried as a filmmaker and as an actor to make films that that get some kind of flow going other than just entertainment, make a little edutainment. So I'm really interested to see what she does. With Hurt Locker, she took us to, you know, a pretty edgy place. And, and I love seeing a sister get out here, you know, see our fil female film directors get out here and make it happen. Uh, I think there's three kinds of people, people that watch stuff happen, people that complain about stuff happening, and people that make things happen, and I think Catherine's one of those people that makes it happen. You know, I was in, I was in South Africa doing another film, and I, I got a phone call from Catherine Bigelow, and she asked if I would come and, uh, and, and I guess, replace someone. And, uh, and when Catherine Bigelow calls, you come. You come right. I play a guy named Jack, who's part of the NSA. There, and there are a number of different uh, agencies that are represented in the, in the film, the CIA, the NSA, and all that stuff. Um, and I just played one of the cogs in that wheel, and um, um, it was, uh, I was really excited to be part of it. I was excited to learn more about, um, you know, the US, U.S. involvement in that part of the world, in that region, how uh, information was gathered, and then, uh, uh, and how it was acted upon, you know, by the agents and by our government and stuff like that. And so it was a very, uh, it was a really informative film for me. It felt uh, really special and important. And, I learned a lot. I was a little scared. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because it's some scary stuff that's happening over there. And uh, other, all in all, just really happy and appreciative to be part of it. What is your opinion about waterboarding? Do you think it's a necessary part of these types of missions and having the end result of capturing Osama bin Laden? Wow, that's a that's a really direct question. <laughs> you, there are things that. Um, that people don't understand uh, when you are when you're going to when you're investigating people who are looking to harm you and the people you love. Do I like it in general? I don't. Do I think that there are many things that are necessary? I do. I, I can't be the person to judge it unless I was actually part of it. Now, I've been asking a lot of the cast members their uh, feelings about interrogation. There are a lot of interrogation scenes in the movie. Now being that outside perspective, what do you think about interrogation, the interrogation process? Is it a necessary tool or do you think it's something that should be avoided? Well, I mean, you have to get information and if you're trying to get information from somebody who's not really wanting to give it, I mean, you think about a girl dating a guy, asking him where he was and him not really being straight, that can become huge you know so just imagine, I love that analogy imagine if the information you're trying to get is really pertinent to something or really important or you feel that many lives depend upon getting accurate information I mean it's definitely gonna call for more extreme measures I don't know how anyone doesn't fold under extreme questioning I would just tell them whatever they needed to know but certainly when many lives are at stake I mean you really don't know what you would do under that kind of pressure for all the fallen people that have had any type of part in the capturing of Osama bin Laden, do you feel that this movie is going to bring some kind of awareness or now adjust to their cause for, you know, giving their lives for the capturing of such a man, a large manhunt? Well, I think the people who are involved, who people who do this work, um, they don't do it for any kind of public recognition. And so I don't think that's part of their makeup to, to crave that or desire it. I think maybe the opposite is true, actually. Uh, but it's still, it's a fascinating story. And it's always fascinating to watch people um, be passionate about their work. And now what are you working on next? I'm doing RoboCop. RoboCop? When do you start? Have you already started filming? Yeah. Okay, great. How is that going so far? It's fun. I get to stand near Gary Oldman and Michael Keaton, and that doesn't suck. And when is that going to be released? I think it's um, February 2014. Okay. Well, looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. It feels actually fairly surreal, you know, because it's all of a sudden it's here. It's now. And um, it's thrilling. I mean, I'm both ecstatic and honored at the same time that it's coming out. Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles, California.